Hello and welcome to Crazy Watches. Today I would like to focus on the Hewlett Packard HP01, their first LED wristwatch calculator from 1977. Let's do some unboxing and also discuss certain details behind this great achievement of miniaturization. Uh, and I would like to show you some uh, parts, my entire stash of parts, to uh, show you how this uh, gizmo is built on the inside. Uh, to start with, uh, this um, product came in a very, very solid cardboard box that has retained most of its uh, features. It's a silver, uh, golden lining type of cardboard, and most of these uh, retain uh, their proper uh, shape. However, on the inside, we see a leathered clamshell uh, that uh, all of them, they aged. Uh, pretty pretty poorly uh, with uh, the material crumbling and leaving uh, marks whenever you uh, touch it. So uh, again, there is a way to uh, uh, mitigate this uh, further and I'll discuss this in just a second. Inside this clamshell we have, of course, the watch itself, uh, the pen and stylus, a little foam pad so the things inside don't rattle and the manual is also hidden here all together looking very very neatly. If you now compare those two boxes uh, this one looks much better nothing was really sticking to your fingers that's just some previous uh, residue when I was touching this one it just kind of sticks to your fingers and doesn't really want to go away. By applying adhesive tape to uh, this material and playing around for a bit, you can pretty much remove it altogether, leaving the uh, cotton fabric itself. Again, that's, in my opinion, a much better outcome, uh, again, without damaging or, or soiling any of uh, your other possessions. Inside the box, we also usually received a leaflet, a sales brochure, a service card, a battery replacement certificate, and all that came in a nice sturdy uh, envelope. People could usually also order spare parts. These always came in nice cardboard boxes again with the golden lining with the spare part number usually printed on the front in this case we have a new old stock stylus and some links these parts could also be ordered directly from service centers and here we have a spare case and either a gold link or a stainless steel link with the relevant part numbers as indicated 16000594 for the stainless and 594 for the gold. As you can see here, they're new old stock, never opened. So again, quite, quite a treat for the true collector. Now let's go to the parts itself, as you can see here, I've pretty much consolidated all the parts that I had at hand and I'll pretty much discuss them one by one. I don't think this has ever been done on the internet, so I just really wanted to capture this for uh, future generations for, for your assessment and uh, use for your collections, uh, parts gathering and, and repairs. The watch is, uh, of course, uh, held on your wrist with a solid, solid wrist uh, bracelet, uh, either in stainless steel or uh, gold-plated, with the stylus incorporated neatly uh, inside the clasp. These parts are usually missing, however, again, finding a spare one takes some time, but can be done, uh, again, browsing forums and, of course, eBay. Uh, these are all the parts uh, from the bracelet uh, assembly. Uh, each link uh, has small little pins on the inside that can be pushed to remove them neatly. And of course, this is a 
Swiss made bracelet. The watch itself, upon of course removing uh, the case back, uh, shows you the module with the three batteries. I will not be focusing exactly on uh, those relevant functions, but display uh, those separate parts. Here we see the case from um, the top and of course upon uh, dismantling them step by step we will come to these parts as follows. We will pretty much have the top part of the case, the bezel, on top of which the glass crystal, sapphire crystal and the keypad is fitted, uh, installed with epoxy. So again, it takes about 200 to 150 degrees Celsius to, uh, again, uh, to put them into the oven for about 15 minutes for about uh, 250 degrees and then press them from uh, the inside to remove these two uh, components. This is the bottom part of the case with the inner side of the module holder being visible here. This is the case back. This is the case uh, back without the case back itself. So again, the bottom part of the bezel. And this is put together. So again, the, the top uh, keypad uh, bezel and the bottom part of the bezel is held together by this retention uh, screw, which again consists out of two portions. The inner uh, screw ring holds the plastic module holder in place, while the outer uh, screw ring holds both pieces together. So the bezel top and the bezel bottom, uh, again, is held by this screw and this can be removed by pretty much pressing uh, one part from the other and as you can see here, there's a crack, a special cut in the middle, allowing these uh, screw rings to be removed. And that allows you to then push the module, the ceramic module, uh, and remove it from, from the case itself. We go further, here we have the module, the ceramic substrate, the module itself, uh, after, of course, uh, removing the protector that pretty much just that's just a plastic piece of plastic film that shows you how those batteries should be uh, positioned in place that is the front part of the same module with the display and the buttons here pretty much for the first time on YouTube I believe is an opened uh, opened module. This is not something you would be able to do at home as both parts of the module are made of ceramic and glued, glued shut without any opportunity to again open them for repairs. So should the, uh, should the module be unrepairable I think the only thing you can do is again open it and see what's inside. So this is the top section of the module after being cut open and if we look inside you can only see pretty much a few tracks traces uh, printed on the inside that pretty much correspond with the button movements button locations and instead of a standard zebra was as was already uh, common in the mid 70s HP just used some sort of zebra strip made out of uh, little tiny wires put on a piece of plastic and inside is just a piece of red soft material to again make it kind of fit and this is all squeezed here as you can see in between here so this pretty much just transmits the every every time you push a button the movement through electricity is transmitted 
through these little pads onto the bottom portion of the substrate and then of course sent towards the circuitry. Going forward I'll just focus shortly on the keypad itself. So again that portion over there has this, uh, this little elastic rubber film on the inside and that is there to hold all the buttons together. By the way this little film is glued on top of this again allowing those buttons to uh, connect specific portions on the substrate. As you can see here it fits over here and corresponds with these locations so every time you click a button these two uh, traces on the substrate are connected. Here is a whole section of uh, the keyboard, the keypad, with uh, buttons removed from this black element with this being uh, glued on the inside so that the buttons don't, don't go anywhere. And this is pretty much shown over here. This is the exact same thing, the rubber uh, pad with the buttons incorporated here into their respective holes. And one thing that I would like to clarify because I've pretty much read a lot of stories that these movements and watches came with brown or black or whatever colors of the keypad. They were all the same. This was all black, brown, uh, aluminum, anodized aluminum that simply through wear and oxidation aged differently. So as a result, we have either brownish or still black uh, keyboards, keypads. And as you can see here, they're all black. And over here, the bottom part of those keys is still black. However, the exposed part has turned completely uh, beige, light brown, simply because of the amount of wear or uh, ultraviolet, uh, again, and oxidation uh, that the watch was exposed to. So without pretty much bothering you which, with much more detail, I think that kind of is everything I had to show for now. Uh, again, quite uh, a quick rundown of all the things that you might find interesting on uh, the repair of the watch and pretty much disassembling it to see uh, what, uh, again, is inside and also making sure that certain components are faulty or not. So again, thanks for watching. Uh, should you have any questions, please uh, add any comments or again, write at crazywatches at interior.pl. Thank you and have a good one.